Beer Bottle Box by Del Rosa. So, a very long time ago, before the turn of the 20th century, my great-great-grandparents owned and operated a brewery in Saginaw, Michigan. This brewery was called the Eagle Brewery. My family still has some bottles from that era. These are my great-great-grandparents, Barbara Rosa and John T. Rosa, primary operators and principal owners of the brewery. The brewery was started by John Wolfgang Rosa, John Rosa's father, and handed down to John Thomas Rosa, who operated the brewery for most of his life before selling it finally right before the Prohibition era. This is a picture of the brewery in its heyday. Lots of people standing around in the street. You can see the brew house, the tap room, all here together. Here are two bottles that I have from the brewery itself. These bottles are glass bottles and they're getting more and more rare. I really want to protect them to keep them from getting damaged or broken. So the objective of this project is to build a box in which these bottles can be stored. In the box, they are surrounded by foam on all sides, top, bottom, left, right, center, and back. This should protect them from damage, particularly if I ever have to move again. Now, I don't need the box to be, you know, ironclad, but it does need to protect them better than, say, a cardboard box. So this is the concept of the box that I want to build. Kind of a rectangular box with a nice lid, and I'll put a logo on top of it to match the original brewery logo. Just take some of the hardware off, take off the corners, take off the hinge, so we can kind of see how this box is put together. Take the lid off, we see the bottles down the box with their foam. We take the foam away, you can see the bottles suspended in the box. So these are glass bottles, and I need to be very careful with them. So now let's rebuild this with the box around the bottles with about an inch of space on all sides. That sets the size of our box. With the foam in there, this is just urethane foam like you'd find in your couch cushion. Just to keep the bottles cushioned and well protected, keep them from rolling around inside of the box. So here's the wood. I used 3 8 inch plywood, cabinet grade material here. I've cut out all the pieces that I want to join together. Now I'm using a mitered edge to join my box pieces together with. This is not a very strong joint. If I had it to do over again today, I would use a box cut joint. This would be much stronger. But since I have such a weak joint, I have reinforced it on the inside with some fiberglass cloth and epoxy. Now if I want an even stronger joint, I would use a dovetail cut. This way I have both a mechanical lock as well as adhesion. Here we see a demonstration of a box cut joint with two pieces of wood. It's been a while since I built this box, and since then I've built my own jig for making box cuts. I'll put a link in the description below to other videos that can demonstrate for you how to make this kind of a jig. So here we see the jig in action. I've not got the saw on for safety while I'm filming. The point of this is to saw a notch in your board and then be able to iterate the board to the next position to saw the next notch. In doing this, you get exact and even spacing of your notches. That way, when you go to put your box joint together, everything is properly spaced. So here we're gluing the lid together. All the miters are joined, lots of clamps on here with some glue. Of course, we'll glue the bottom together as well. Now, if I had it to do over again, I would have made the box as one piece, one big cube, and then sawn the lid off later. As it turned out, my lid was just slightly different than the bottom, and I had to adjust this after the glue set up. That was unfortunate, but it was only a minor tweak. But I think it would be much better to make the two pieces together as one piece first, and then cut them apart later. This way, the two pieces will match each other exactly. So here's the bottom, all finished and glued. I have not yet added the fiberglass tape and epoxy on the inside of the box. Let's think about some hardware. 
I bought these corner pieces to put on the corners, more as a decorative kind of thing. They do help strengthen it a little bit, but not a lot. I brought matching buckles to latch the lid closed. And I've also purchased some internal hinges for supporting the lid. So here's the logo for my great-great-grandfather's original brewery. I want to reproduce this logo and put it on top of the box. To start with, I've put an initial coat of sealer on the lid. And now, using a stencil, I've coated a white block of paint in the area where I want to put the logo. If I just painted the logo over top of the wood, it would be washed out and kind of difficult to see. So I need this white background to help the logo stand out from the wood. Now we can paint our flag. You can see we've got the red stripes in there, the blue field. Some of the flagpole is done. You can see I have masking around it to protect the rest of the box. And it's a little hard to see in these pictures, but there is a piece of clear frisket film protecting the box top around the area of the flag that's not going to be painted. So if I do get a little bit of overspray outside of the area that I'm working on, that can be easily cleaned off. Now we add the eagle, painting this pretty much all black, and then scratching back down to the white paint to add in all of this detail. And there it is, the new logo that I created in 2017, compared to the old logo from somewhere in the 1850s to 1900. Now, with our box sealed and our logo finished, we'll go ahead and start adding some of the hardware. You can see the corners are already on, and we're putting the latches on the front. Here we put the hinge on the back. This hinge was a shiny brass hinge. It didn't match my other pieces of hardware. I kind of wish that it had. And I put some felt feet on the bottom of the box to keep it from scratching my furniture. These are just adhesive. They stick on. Lastly, let's look at the lid support hinge that's inside the box. This keeps the lid from falling accidentally. With our box done, we need to fit some foam. I've got inch thick pieces of foam that I've cut to size. I'm just going to fit one here to the top lid of the box. And I have a similar piece cut for the bottom. This makes sure that there's one inch of foam above and below my bottles. Now I'm going to cut some velvet. I bought some blue velvet. I need to cut it to size. So here I'm just going to trim a little bit off of this one corner. This piece was a little too big. My velvet cut to size. I now wrap my foam in the velvet. Once it's wrapped, I can replace it into its location in the lid. This is just loosely wrapped. I've not sewn it on or used any adhesive or anything like that. This allows me to change it easily in the future if I decide I need to. Or just tuck it in. Now we need to trim some foam. I have more pieces of foam and I'm cutting holes in the foam with just a pair of scissors to match the size and shape of my bottles. You can see I marked it out with the marker. Trim a few of these little bits off here that aren't needed. We got it pretty much cut. And I put the, all the different pieces of foam into the box. These are the pieces of foam that will protect the bottles from the top, bottom, and sides. Once I have all the foam in, I can wrap these now in a piece of velvet as well. Just to make it look pretty, and it's nice and soft, keeps from scratching the, the bottles. We're just going to tuck it in again, like we did with the top. That way, if I need to, I can change it later. With all of that done, we can try fitting our bottles into the box. They should fit fairly easily. Snugly, but easily, without having to force them in. And there it is. A beautiful box to protect my beer bottles. We'll open the lid, and there are the bottles inside. If I want to display my bottles, 
I can stand them up and they're fairly well supported inside the box. When I'm done, I can just put them back in the box. Nice inch of foam over top of the bottles to help protect them. We close the lid, lock our latches, and our bottles are nice and safe. That is my beer bottle box project. I hope this was of interest to you and I appreciate you watching today. If you have comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment box below. Tell me what you thought of this video. And as always, if you like this video, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching today. See you in the next episode.